I'm Michelle Cole. I'm a flight instructor and representative of the FAA safety team. Today I'd like to share a story with you. A story that deals with a wide range of general aviation and human factors issues. You'll see an aircraft owner and pilot doing owner-operator maintenance and later conducting a typical general aviation flight. Closely observe the actions taken and note the decisions made by the characters in the story. Ask yourself, are they reasonable, legal, and safe? Or might there be a better way to do it? I've made observations of my own, and after you've made yours, we can compare notes. Are you ready? Let's begin. Hey, Slowpoke, how you doing over there? I'm getting a little hungry. Be done already if Junior here will put the phone down for five minutes. Only be a minute. You know what? I know exactly what you're talking about. We can't even have a meal together. Uh, uh, sorry. I got to I got to take this. Uh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> oh yeah. Hello. Looks like the nut doesn't fall too far from the tree. Okay, we got the sample to send to the lab for analysis. What's next? Well, uh, uh, just a sec. All right, that was uh, Carla. She said that she's gonna pick up mom and they're gonna meet us here at the airport. Oh, getting a call. Hey, hello? Hey, man, what's up? No, no, not today. Well, I can't, my old man's paying for my flight lessons, so I gotta, okay, yeah. All right, I'll call you when I get back. Okay, all right, bye. As you were saying? The oil sample in this bottle, what do we do with it? Well, we pack it and ship it to the lab for analysis, just like you said. That's right, but don't you think it would be a good idea to fill out the label first so they know where it came from? Well, you can just do that when you're packing up for shipping, right? No way. Too much risk for a mix-up. We put the label on at the engine just after taking the oil sample. That way, we know where it came from. Yeah, whatever. Not whatever. Aircraft maintenance is serious business. <sighs> It's not some random process of doing things. It's, it's details, it's, it's record keeping, it's following checklists, it's doing things the right way, the same way every time. If you say so, Kev. <clears throat> okay, all right, I got it. I tell you what, if you would, go ahead and coordinate it and uh, send me a text on confirmation. We're not gonna be available for a while en route to uh, Sky Rice. When we land there, I'll give you a call back, let you know we're on schedule. Okay? Thanks a lot. We'll, uh, we'll talk to you later. Bye-bye. Oh, let's see now. Where were we? Oh, yeah, we're torquing that filter. All right, I think that's it. Check the numbers. Okay, guys, I'm almost done on this side. How y'all getting along? I'm doing great. Take yeah. about a half hour or so, and we'll, uh, that'll give me a chance to get the test flight out. That sounds about right. That works out. I can probably get the uh, test ride in, maintenance test chest flight, get that done, and uh, should be about the same time the girls uh, show up when we move on from there. Sounds good. You're reset to zero. All right, we'll get it done. Roger that. All right, before we put this filter back in the plane, we're gonna take a thin coat of oil around the gasket. Makes for a good seal. Right, is there like a brush or something that I could use to put on there? Nah, just use your finger. That's why they invented coveralls. Don't get the white ones. Shows all the dirt. You're a sick man, Kevin. So I'm told. Well, this has the makings of an interesting story. We have a father and son performing maintenance on a general aviation airplane. The father is a certificated pilot and part owner of the plane. And that, according to CFR 43.3, enables him to perform certain maintenance functions. Junior, on the other hand, is not a certificated pilot or mechanic, and therefore must work under the supervision of a certificated maintenance professional. So, Phil is working unsupervised, and Kevin is supervising Junior. What else have you noticed so far? Let's start with Phil. He's focused, meticulous, he works from a checklist, and he deals with interruptions effectively. Junior is less focused, he's multitasking, He's impulsive and he's dealing less effectively with interruptions, and there are a lot of them. Kevin is knowledgeable, professional. Is he a good teacher? 
We live in an information-rich age, and there are many things competing for our attention. Most of us think we can keep up, but most of us also think we're better at multitasking than we really are. That can make it difficult to, as Kevin puts it, do the right things the same way every time. This is especially true if, like Junior, you're trying to learn something new. It's a good idea for pilots and mechanics to consider every interruption as an opportunity to overlook something critical. Keep interruptions to a minimum, deal with those you can't avoid, and when you return back to the task at hand, back up a couple steps from where you paused. Some pilots and flying organizations make it a policy to start every interrupted checklist from the beginning. That way they know the checklist is indeed complete. There's a lot more we could discuss if we were in the same room together, but I think you've got a good handle on the characters in the story. Be sure to join us for chapter two.